I like this book. I read it a while back, and it's talking about how we need time for solitude, that we need time face to face with other people, and that we should not use technology mindlessly and let it control us and take so much of our time. Instead, we should be more intentional about how we use our technology and why we use our technology should be assessed so that we know exactly why we're using some app or some spending some time. Looking at the screen for some reason or the other. Now, I haven't really applied anything from this book into my life. I mean, there are some other things that I did when I heard some other people talk about making your phone black and white to make it less appealing. I am not really binging any social media or YouTube on my phone. Most of the time, I'm using it to listen to music. Or to listen to an audiobook, or for messaging, and other than those three things, I don't really use my phone that much. Although I still check it quite often, which is not a good thing. But then I heard this case study of a guy who wrote to Cal Newport after having applied some stuff from this digital minimalism book for the last one and a half years, and it's pretty insightful. It got me thinking. Here's the clip. It's been 1.5 years since I read Digital Minimalism and started applying its lessons. Since then, I have one, drastically increased how much I read; two, drastically increased how much I exercise; three, incrementally increased how much I sleep; and four, significantly increased the amount of movies and video games I have actively and consciously consumed, in contrast to passive or regretful consumption. But the good in here is that digital declutters and digital minimalism works, right? He got intentional about his technology usage. He added things into his life that was more meaningful to him. And look at these changes. He's reading. He's exercising. He's sleeping more. He's much more conscious about how he engages with media. This is someone who I can tell you is probably a lot less anxious, a lot more engaged than he was before. Probably a lot more productive in work as well. It's like the heavy drinker doesn't realize the impact this is having on their lives. The hangovers, the lack of energy, the lack of other pursuits until they move on. And then they realize, oh my God, life is in technicolor before it was in a sort of uh, fuzzy black and white. So I love hearing those case studies. You can completely change your relationship with your phone. It's not as hard as you think. And the results when people do can be pretty cool. So I was thinking he's playing more video games and movies than he was before. And he's being intentional about those activities. And I thought, actually, that's Kind of something that I want to do as well. I have Tekken 8. I beat the story mode, but I do want to get into the gameplay and get better at it instead of button mashing. It is a form of entertainment, and you can say it's a waste of time, but it it is a skill, also a skill based game that requires a lot of learning and dedication. And learning to get better at something like that kind of game, a fighting game, is pretty fun. So I, there's a part of me that wants to get into that and learn it. But the default when I sit down on the couch to relax is just to turn on YouTube. And sometimes, yes, I have a great YouTube session, and I absolutely loved what I watched. But there are times when I didn't really get much out of it, and it was a waste of time. So I think I want to be more intentional about watching YouTube on TV. That's my huge time suck. So unless I schedule it in my calendar of watching YouTube for 30 minutes to an hour, I will also schedule in time to play Tekken 8. I'll give it a try and see if I enjoy it. See if I really want to get into it. Learn the details. Details of the game, but yeah, food for thought about being intentional with media instead of just being sucked into it and binging and watching things mindlessly. So Mochi's surgery is tomorrow morning, very early. I have to drop her off by 7 a.m. for Mochi. I'll keep you guys posted when we pick her up. She's gonna stay there for two nights, so we'll pick her up on Sunday. See you tomorrow. One percent better every day, baby. Today I did my full routine. I did pull-ups, dips. Dumbbell presses, flat and incline, shoulder by try, and stairmaster. So that was an hour and a half of a workout. It is cold today. I am absolutely stuffed because I had jeju kukbap, which is Korean pork soup with rice. So I'm out here to tame my full stomach. Tigger came for morning cuddles, and now he's had enough cuddles. Figures on my desk. That's rare. Mochi <laughs> tega. <laughs> Mochi tega. 
もちっちゃが<笑>キューティーズ